All right, the time is upon us. I am going to redo the electronics lab. Uh, so this is uh, because I've got a bunch of uh, fancy new tabletops and office furniture, which has already started to invade this place. Uh, and uh, frankly, I want to get rid of that ASAP to make room because it's just sitting and taking up a huge amount of space. Case in point. Uh, so, uh, for those who may not be aware, uh, th this is my old bench uh, which I've been shooting videos on since the start and this thing was never intended to be a uh, long time running bench uh, but then life got in the way, this was intended to last uh, a couple of years uh, it's lasted since 2009, 2010, something like that so it's getting rather old and crusty it's untreated MDF 22mm with almost no brazing anywhere, so you can see uh, that's not lens distortion, uh, that is sagging. And if uh, that huge bunch of drawers weren't there, you would see the whole bench has uh, got a rather considerable wave to it over there. Uh, on the main workbench, I've actually kind of remedied it by just bolting a huge metal bar uh, onto there, but uh, even that is not correcting it perfectly and for the most part this table leg is actually airborne due to the fact that the bend of the desk is just lifting it up and everything's resting on the leg that's kind of in there somewhere. So the long and short of it is this is an utterly useless bench and what may not carry over very well on camera is that it's absolutely tiny. Uh, originally uh, I had my main worker computer here with uh, three monitors. It, this entire gap between the load and that shelf in the background there was occupied by my computer so it took up pretty much the entirety of this desk. Uh, this it has since moved to the new office and uh, immediately upon doing that <laughs> clutter and crap and garbage so obviously this this setup is not working right now, else I would actually be have in, in, in instantly start to use this area for something more productive instead of uh, storing. I think that's clean, yeah. It's not laundry, it's just clothes. Uh, so, we need to do something about it. Uh, sadly, the shape of this room is uh, not very optimized for, well, anything. Uh, uh, limiting our options rather considerably. We've got the door there, which you don't want to walk right into a desk, uh, and uh, it's uh, got a ridiculous like 50 centimeter gap to the wall there, which just makes this whole wall all horrible and annoying to work around because when you enter the room already with this desk, you're walking right into the corner of a desk, and that's just no good, sadly, though. Uh, that's something I don't think we're going to be getting around. Uh, this wall is also very silly because we've got windows there, the windows there, uh, so we've only got clean wall for mounting stuff there and some over there, but then you can see we have this weird corner here and uh, this whole... Uh, uh, the depth of this is just 126 centimeters, so you can't very easily fit an L-shaped desk in there without making it ridiculously narrow and uh, you cannot easily have anything protruding out here because you've got this very narrow corridor here. This is just over a meter wide. You cannot uh, reasonably cut anything to it and in there is the shower which everyone's using all the time. So our options are rather limited. Uh, so since I have had a rather considerable amount of time uh, to consider how well this bench has worked for me in this configuration I'm going to take the safe route and make something similar uh, and uh, what well, I'm basically planning to keep this area as the main electronics bench and uh, then have a smaller desk uh, doing an L desk in this corner uh, but uh, like I have two sizes of uh, uh, desk surface to use. One is 185 by 85 centimeters deep uh, and the other is uh, 160 by 75 deep. 
So I'm going to take one of the large boards and put it where the current electronics disc is. That's going to give it about 10 to 20 centimeters more width and 10 centimeters more depth. Uh, and I'm going to take the smaller disc size and put it here, which is going to decrease the depth of this bench in towards the wall bit. And that is because you can see this uh, desk actually is way too wide in its current configuration because we're not able to use space all the way to the wall uh, for the reason that I'm tiny and I don't have enough of a reach to actually uh, use gear that's stacked underneath there uh, making everything a big horrid mess uh, this uh, shelf here is pretty much the end of my comfortable reach zone and as you can see that's almost in line with this bench from my normal working position. Uh, so, uh, the way the fact that this bench is this way has uh, uh, its roots in the fact that uh, this originally was the main bench where I have a computer and pretty much did everything. Uh, but as time went on, all the electronics, actual workshop stuff, which is the mo main only thing I use this room for now, and moved onto this bench, which was never. It, it was just intended as a little like extra thing because we. I had a bit of extra board left over from making the decks to right. Uh, so, uh, the result of that is this desk is uh, 80 centimeters deep in total and it has no cable holes or anything. It's mounted flush to the wall. So, as you can see, we're just not using the rear end, the wall side of this bench very well at all. And uh, since I need to store those cans there, all tools, everything on this bench all the time. Uh, w w we have an effective bench area of like 60 centimeters, which is just, it's very annoying to work with. Very annoying indeed. I cannot have a computer monitor sitting on a foot or anything because it just eats too much of a bloody bench up. So, we need more depth there and less depth there, and we're going to achieve that. Uh, another issue with this whole setup is this uh, this whole area has been impossible to utilize uh, due to the way that uh, my computer has been here uh, this has just been it's been out of my reach when I've been using the computer since I've been sitting uh, pretty much in line with the amazing horn man there and when I do that, my reach is pretty much to here and scooting back and forth in the chair, you know, it, it's not comf a comfortable way of working. So uh, for the longest time, I've just been throwing shit, random shit over there and, you know, I've put the shelf with the old IMAX there, which I never, ever use. So this has just been wasted space. And uh, I think w whenever you see a place that just gets cluttered and unused, that's a bench area you do not need. You're better off putting shelving there. So that's what I'm considering doing. Because once I rip all this stuff out, I'm going to have all this. Uh, this is I get like it's like three or four square meters of this uh, old bench top to make shelving out of. And I'm thinking that's going to get to cover that entire corner. I'll just mount some uh, alpha racks on the walls with my fancy new SDS drill nonetheless to make my wallet feel happier about that expensive purchase uh, but uh, yeah if I start so I have to bloody well clear all this stuff up and uh, that's not going to be an easy task because this is I mean, this bench is it's got the better part of a decade of use and all the shit lying on it <sighs> But uh, there's nothing left but to get it going. Thankfully, since I do have the alpha racks for the shelves, those can stay so I can... I, I just need to clear the bench, thankfully. And I'm pretty much just going to shove everything into boxes uh, haphazardly and uh, put it aside while I'm working. And here's, by the way, here's another lovely feature of this desk. Check that out. Oh, yeah. That's some proper woodworking engineering right there in the kingdom of trash.
And the whole weight of the desk is actually supported by two uh, 40 euro Ikea, Ikea helmets, which uh, these are probably starting to rust underneath uh, because uh, this rug has been here since 2009 and it's utterly disgusting. I need to get rid of that and probably burn it. Burn it in bleach. Uh, but yeah, let's just start working. I already cheated. A bit started putting these together. I'm gonna have to throw these in a moist dungeon somewhere to rot. Alright, getting somewhere. I've got the uh, speaker shelf removed and moved over into uh, the horrible, cold, non electric storage room so I can populate that with all the random trash I've got on the bench and on the floor and everywhere. But uh, you're not going to believe this, because when I, I'm about to disassemble this thing and move it away, when I stuck my hand under here, and I pulled out <laughs> an envelope full of money. I have, I have been looking for this thing for forever, or rather, I have been looking at this thing uh, over and over again, going, huh, oh yeah, no cash, shit. Or in fact, I've had this thing sitting. In the copier. <laughs> Go me. When in need of space, just throw shit into the boiler room and call it insulation. Insulation! Ah, oh, there we have the exposed board. Now you can really see the horrible shape it's taken over the years. It's just all bent and horrible on account of having only one one zip board in the middle for a 2.4 meter wide sheet of MDF. No good. So I guess at the point we need to clear out all the remnants of my old uh, desk. So most notable we have this rather interesting looking intestine wrapped around the bench and this is some heating wire because this basement is very very cold even in summer and in order to not freeze my legs off I just uh, got my hands on some really cheap used heating wire and uh, had it sitting there under the keyboard and uh, under my feet as well there's even some under the carpet uh, and uh, there, there's a shit ton of the stuff it's like 10 or 20 meters so it's not going to be too much fun ripping out but uh, it has to be done, it serves no purpose now, and uh, <sighs> it's been falling off for a while anyway. Those are all my, oh god damn it, it's falling off again and ripping and burning my leg fixes. Hmm. But at least that probably means it's not going to be too hard to actually, well never mind, it's going to be hell on earth. Oh well. And after that we've got the server, which I'm not sure, exactly sure where it's going to go. This thing needs to be online all the time. It does like it in here, day and hair in the basement since it's so cool. Uh, but it's not going to be able to live there since the new bench is just going to go to like somewhere around there. And this is going to be converted to shelf space. So I'm going to have to put that somewhere else, which is going to be a bit of a bother. I do have these two weird cupboards here. The, the closest one's storage, but the further, further away one's just got like a laundry basket in it. So I might just drill some electricity and network in there, just some holes through the top there, and uh, pull some wiring. It's going to be annoying since, uh, yeah, concrete walls. Uh, but I, I don't know, I'll have to set this thing temporarily up somewhere else while I'm working though. <sighs> no fun. This has been in service for so long, it's just layers upon layers of cobbling. And there we go. The kingdom of trash has been reduced to a rather more infantile state. Everything cleared off. That has not happened for a very long 
time. When I look at it this way, there's actually been quite a bit of bench space here, but it's just been unusable due to all just for the layout that's resulted over the years and you can very clearly see the wear patterns on on the board this is where my computer used to be good thing I don't have a UV light to shine on that and uh, this is the electronics works bench so clearly I've just been all the movement has been pretty much there but nothing there and then there and when I have the computer just nothing when uh, ever since I moved it up to the office, so a good ninety percent of this bench has just not been used. I mean, it, it, it's been sitting idle, and it's just incredible what a waste of space that really is. I mean, ah, it, it bothers me that I let this go on for so long. Ugh. So I did get the heating strip removed and packed away. It is a testament as to how mould resistant these old houses are though. And because that thing's been on a lot and it's been taped to the floor here. And despite the fact that this floor, uh, the, these old concrete floors, they suck up water from the ground. That, that's normal. So this floor is always slightly moist, yet there hasn't been any mould growth at all despite the heating cable going there, which makes me happy. Yeah, I've been a bit worried, actually, since this place has gotten a bit of a reek of, like, basement, basically. But uh, that's coming from there. And uh, that was freshly painted, just as the rest of a wall, in 2009 or so. And it's just falling off. And because of moisture ingress, which again isn't an issue, it's it's to be expected in this house. Uh, but uh, it has turned into something rather unpleasant due to the fact that this has been so solitary. Uh, by far the worst part of work I've done in this workshop is anything to do in there. Because you you have to crawl an awful force in order to get in there. And you have to go either from the computer desk... Or, well, this has just been blocked off with my power cubes and what have you. So it's just been incredibly inaccessible. And uh, not at all ventilated since the bench goes all the way to the wall. And uh, that's something we're definitely going to change with a new one. <sighs> so, yeah. The next step is going to be to remove the desk surface. Uh, and... Uh, then undo all the wiring so I don't have to crawl underneath in order to get at it. Oh yeah, and once we've got all the stuff up, this this thing's cocking its leg like a dog. The bench is just so bent over time that this is hovering in the air. Ah, due to all the built up tension. And in there we've got a shelf of expensive electronic items. I've, well, I've pretty much got to the entire lab sitting on that single shelf along with some other trash. Pretty weird that uh, a lab which is as equipped as this one, I mean I've got a fair amount of stuff, can just be packed away so neatly. That's just a box of all the power cables and it is chock full. I have put them uh, actually specifically in that because I label all of my power cords. So that's one for the HP 339A, the source with soldering stations, or hot air station, what have you. Everything's got its name on it. Which makes it a bit easier when you've got, like, I think I have about 80 power outlets in this room, usually. <sighs> Well, that's enough of one day. Good night. We'll resume tomorrow. Sometimes I feel like I don't have a leg to stand on. But then I remember that's just not true. Alright. I've undone all the screws. All in a different place. I think we can be... <laughs> reveal. 
a horror, so that's why. Like, like. Wow. This place has not seen the light of the day for many years. And we've got all these horribly mongered wires running here. This is where I used to rest my feet when I have my computer down here. So these are uh, going to be all worn down and in awful condition. Probably want to get rid of that one altogether. I think that's the main score for everything on the workbench. So, yeah, kind of uh, need to grab the issue of moving the server now because uh, I don't want to have this rather expensive thing running while I'm doing woodworking in here and this place is going to be repurposed anyway it's going to be a bit annoying though, I don't really have any place to put it I will figure something out just throw it to the side can't really afford to have it offline though what with it being my main server for everything Mm, oh well, oh, that's a lovely cheapo TP-Link switch. This thing has been a warrior, an absolute warrior. It's uh, from like two, 2008 maybe, 8 port gigabit switch. Changed the caps and it's been going 24-7 without an issue ever since. Amazing piece of technology. Just very, very inefficient giant heat sink inside there. Ah, yeah. One more plate to go. Plate, sheet. It's literally so bad, this leg does nothing at all. And we are in, and uh, yeah, this war has not been doing great. Being all locked away underneath a bench. This uh, is solely because of how enclosed it's been, really. Because none of the other walls, even though they're obviously made of the same material, have suffered these issues. Uh, it's, it's not really a big deal, though, even though it looks horrid. There's no mould, obviously. This is just some uh, salt, which you get in all concrete when it gets wet. Nothing to worry about. This is just my paint coming off. So, yeah. Ugly, but uh, nothing dangerous. I'm just uh, going to clean that up and let it sit as raw concrete. doesn't really make a difference. It's going to be underneath a new bench anyway. But hopefully I managed to get it a bit better ventilated, so it won't get quite as bad. When, when you have just the slightest amount of airflow, it stays just fine. This wall is a bit dirty and worn because I used to have a dog which used to sleep in that corner. She liked it in the dark. Rather big dog of that. So, I suppose, it's, all in all, it's not a bad the performance of paint on that wall. It's, it's seen a fair amount of heavy use. So, I'm going to have to rip all the cabling out. Uh, the wood frame is uh, going to have to go. I might reuse some of that since it's pretty fresh 2x4 in long chunks. And uh, I'm going to use uh, some kind of framing similar to what I did on the bench in the other room. I've got some uh, scrap metal which is nicely welded at 90 degree angles which I might make just a bunch of support going that way to bolt it onto a wall and use some of my table legs to actually support it. But we'll, we'll have to see just how I specifically do it. Cleaning up a wiring is step number one, or rather, uh, waiting for a server to install update so I can turn it off. And yeah, I'm probably just going to throw the server into the desk upstairs for the time being. It's got network and power and UPS there, so it'll be all good temporarily. It's gonna 
Uh, it's only a bit of a sauna though when it's spent 10 hours rendering a video, but hey, what do you not do for your entertainment? In my annoying news thing, I just got off a phone with a Canon support because I think this camera must actually be faulty. Uh, because no matter what battery I put in it, uh, it it's all drain overnight. Like I, I put the original Canon battery in it uh, last night and uh, eh, it was dead this morning from a full charge. So, something's fucked. I'm hoping I'm not going to have to return this thing on warranty. That would be extremely annoying because it takes weeks to ship anything to anywhere from here. Alright, and now I've got from the IKEA hell in a central way. And this is going to be the big rip. You can see just how worn out the carpet is. Right. Where have I been? That's the colour it's supposed to be. That's the colour it's become. <laughs> so this area has been pressed down, tidying into the floor for almost a decade. What new life forms are we about to discover? Oh, that's actually not that bad. But. Better than I did expect. We do have remnants from a time past. That's probably an eight year old Q tip for you. <laughs> oh wow! The surface finish on the bottom of this, it's, it's perfectly smooth. It's just been pressed up against the floor for so long, it's just gone absolutely. Flat. This is the area that's been underneath my office chair for the most part. Ah, this is not going to carry over to the camera very well, but that's that's impressively smooth. <laughs> oh wow! What? Uh -oh. I think we we've got a surprise. That's a china packet. <laughs> That's the flattest china packet I've ever seen. <laughs> Is that bubble wrapping? There's bubble wrapping there. That's gone absolutely flat. <laughs> oh wow. Is this dated? No. Nothing readable. Wow. That's going to be the flattest bubble wrap package you're ever likely to see. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't remember that being there. And I put the rug down, and clearly I didn't bother cleaning the floor beforehand. <laughs> it was a steamrolled. Yellow, yellow wire. It's absolutely flattened. That's silly. That's a flattened cable. <laughs> oh, wow. The treasure is one may stumble across upon somewhere like that. Alright, then that's all the wiring and the frame out of the way. This doesn't look like something. So, here is the worst part of everything. So, this is the, the, uh, the plank that's been up against uh, down the corner there. And just look at that. It, it's been so moist that it's started to rot. Yet, uh, there's like no mould at all. It's just like rot. Rotting wood and some like insects' nests or something. That's rather amazing that you can have something this deteriorated. But this is obviously the source of the kind of basementy moist smell in, in here. The, the moment I got this off, it was like a huge whiff in my face. But you can have something like this and it's still no mold. It's ugly, very ugly, 
but uh, this will clean up nicely. I'll just, just scrub off all the all the plaster here and the paint, and it'll just be raw concrete and look like the date was built. So I'm not really sure what the next step is going to be, say for sorting through the wiring and putting in boxes. Uh, I kind of want to start maintaining the new desk surfaces, however, I'm getting the feeling that it's going to be easier to make some shelving first and just have that out of the way so I don't have a big bench in the way while I'm assembling that. So, but I have to go out and buy some more alpha racks for that. Ah, decisions, decisions. On a side note, here are all the extension cords, or rather some of the extension cords that have been the life support system of a workshop. So I've actually got uh, three of these, in, I've had three of these installed, I'm not sure where I've put the other ones, I've just ripped them out and framed them somewhere. So three of those, and just endless amount of these smaller ones. This one's excellent, it's got a big hole in it, so I just put some tape on it. Yeah, it's not broken. Ah. And it was rather obvious that I was not the best carpenter when I built this thing. I was like 15 or so. Because uh, that's, that's not how you use a screw. Alright, and I've now taken the time to very thoroughly scrub the floor. Yum! That's not even of a dark in the bucket. And uh, after plenty of contemplation, I uh, realized that I had a preference for, for a fucked up uh, paint job over baby diaper accident. So I've also taken the time to scrub a wall with bleach very lightly just to get rid of the worst brown skid marks on the side. And it hasn't turned out too bad. The paint held up. Way better than I dared expect. <sighs> it is a rather heavy duty job to scrub a floor like this. I really had to just dig into it to just scratch and rip all the dirt out of the cracks. And I have indeed cleaned it well into the cracks. <sighs> so, tomorrow I'm going to go to the out of the store and get myself some shelf units and just go mad with the STS drill and pretty much shelfify these entire walls. So the new desk is gonna go to like somewhere around here, it's uh, 1.6 meters. So I'm gonna do uh, similar shelf units to those all the way here and uh, then full height ceiling to floor, well window to floor on these two walls. This is a particularly nice shelf wall. What a miracle for the general quality of the walls in this house. <sighs> yeah. Huh. Bedtime, Jesus. Something I also am considering doing uh, when I'm uh, drilling in concrete anyway is uh, improve upon these uh, racks because these are just suspended uh, with a couple of bolts through some hoops which were originally uh, cast into the ceiling so uh, they're just all loose they wobble around and sometimes when if you poke them the wrong way they'll just flip and either bonk this way or bonk the other way making all, all the lighting set up very very rickety and uh, due to the spacing you can see the lights hang a relatively low, uh, pretty much uh, making it impossible for any a normal sized human to enter this room because uh, I'm tiny, like not even 180, 175 or so, and as you can see, eh, that's not lots of clearance. And what, what, just, just from cleaning around with the brooms and stuff, I'm constantly hit of the lamps uh, with a broomstick which is a major pain, so just if I, if I can just gain uh, five centimeters on that, it would be excellent. And I'm thinking I'm gonna do like a cross frame. I've got some 
Oh, with the stainless steel rack doors, which are useless since they're custom size. I think I'm just gonna take one that way and then just bolt another one uh, the other way around. So I'll have like a double H uh, wide that and wide that way so I can bolt stuff onto it as I decide. But uh, that's a design decision for the future. And thus we were one Canon 800D shorter as it's gone in for warrant repair. But uh, in the meantime, I've figured out a decent way to mount these uh, alpha rack units straight. So it's too late in the evening for me to be able to drill on the walls, uh, but uh, it gives me time to think. And uh, I've been an absolute idiot when mounting these in the past, besides, because I've just pretty much put them on the wall like that and try to squeeze them in place while using a pen in my other hand to actually mark heavy holes and hey, it works but it's a real bother uh, because all you need to do in order to get them perfectly straight is to use a laser cross obviously and some blue tack sticking on uh, upside down or back to front tack them in place according to a laser and you've got a perfect template for drilling your holes every time. So now I've just got to do a whole bunch more of these. Uh, I went and bought some today for a price of sum of money, but it's worth it. Uh, so I've got, uh, I believe, four 636 mil ones to go along here underneath a window. And it's gonna just be four in a row along the length of that. And then I've got two ridiculous long ones. These guys, which are gonna go, I'm thinking, on this wall from top to bottom, since there's uh, not gonna be any desk here, I'll make this a proper shelf. And uh, two one meter long ones to go where that one's sitting, just to go over the bench and uh, in, in the corner where there's no window limiting the height. Again, I cannot stress enough. I am now deaf. Jesus. I... I cannot stress the loudness of that. Ouch. Enough. That, that was absolutely horrible. Absolutely painful. Jesus. Whew. Oh, yeah, yeah, I cannot... I lost my train of thought. I cannot stress the height limit here enough. Like, we've got... 2.2, 2.15 meters to move around. So it's just real low ceilings. And yeah, so these are gonna go here. I'm gonna, you know, it's gonna give me a top shelf of just about here with, you know, decent space. I'm thinking I wanna make my JBL 4311 speakers in the corner just in the top. So I'm probably gonna have a top shelf all right around here, they're, they're like 45 centimeters wide or so, which would actually give me eh, the first decent speaker mounting I've had in the workshop. Uh, the other one going here, that's going to actually be rather tight. I'm going to have to mount it vertically. Like, oh god, it's going to take up a giant chunk of space. Lovely. Oh well, I'll have to consider my options. Most importantly, uh, the speakers aren't going to occupy any bench space as they have previously. Uh, yeah, I'm also thinking I, I need some place. I want to wall mount my component cabinets. I'm going to splurge and go for a few new uh, ones of those as well, since these are absolutely awful there. Uh, they are functional, but uh, the uh, assembly technique for them is ridiculous because they're just a bunch of segments glued together. So I didn't trust these uh, wall mounted because at some stage uh, they're just gonna go crack and the bottom segments are gonna fall off and leave me with a giant pain. Uh, the method of mounting those I'm considering just using some of my uh, excess board or perhaps some leftover plywood from the van ceiling project to 
and just mount a board on the wall where I can just drill and mount willy-nilly without having to do it in the concrete. Uh, but uh, that doesn't exclude uh, the mounting of these rack sh uh, shelf racks uh, anyway because I can just put these way off to the sides and uh, mount uh, the board in between and I can just have shelves around the components cabinets if I so decide. But we'll see what happens. Now I just got oh, pain in my ears is what I got, but I got to measure up and get me six foot to six mil once mounted. This is the weirdest thing. This is a 10 outlet power strip that uh, I've just had screwed to at the bottom of this shelf, but somehow it's attached itself really hard by some unknown mechanism. And I, I feel like I'm about to break my knife because it's just as if it were attached with a screw, but uh, I know it isn't because uh, uh, there's no way to disassemble this thing from the front. So I just had to bolt it with two screws and yet in the end uh, that's it's supposed to. Let's just put wool stock there. I have no idea what's happened. I'm just look, it's ridiculous and there's nothing from the top. <laughs> nothing at all. Jesus, what's going on? I'm completely retarded. That's obviously what's going on. Oh, fuck's sake. I'm an idiot. Got myself a packet of bits. My way of trying to keep everything complete, because I'm pedantic. Paint them. This is uh, just a couple of uh, uh, fridge door magnets, so this will just stick together. I can pull the bits out. They'll just seal up. Beautiful. So long as that paint's there, I'm not going to lose a single one of these.